Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our fifth webinar, and this is the um, webinar series, uh, Ask MNLCT webinar series, uh, part of launched by the Mennonite New Life Center of Toronto. Um, we will give it a few seconds while people are uh, logging on uh, to this webinar, but uh, we have a a few attendees coming on from settlement agencies today, as well as from um, uh, clients who are joining us. So welcome aboard. We'll just give it a couple of minutes as people are, uh, are signing up, signing into the, uh, to the web, uh, webinar. But um, let me, in the meantime, just uh, greet all of you. Thank you for being here today. Um, we have um, a wonderful uh, members of our team from the bridging programs, Alexandra from the mental health bridging program and um, Daniel from the media and communications bridging program. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's a pleasure hosting you. I know you do a lot of work in the field. Um, also from our settlement team, again, great workers, uh, always uh, dedicated to clients and, and the thousands of of people out there that need assistance in many different ways. Um, Natalia, thank you for joining us today. Uh, and uh, Bisan, and as well. Uh, it's good to have you here again. And Ling Ling, yes, uh, thank you. And Ling Ling, it's, uh, you've been here for almost every single webinar. This is your fifth one. So thank you again for your dedication and your time. Um, it's, uh, it's a pleasure having you uh, all today. So, um, we let's kick off. Uh, I know there's some people still trying to join, as I can see, but uh, we can we can start uh, the program. I uh, again, I want to welcome our attendees. We this uh, just a brief um, background on why we launched this series and the purpose. So uh, since we um, we're all uh, uh, we're faced with the pandemic. Um, a few months ago, two months ago, it's been more than two months now. Um, our center was coming up with a lot of initiatives of how we can uh, help in, uh, our clients and reach out to them in the most efficient if, uh, manner and effective manner. And this is one of many initiatives aside from the day-to-day -day work that uh, our settlement team, our mental health counselors, our um, uh, uh, our, our staff that are work in the education um, uh, arm of the of of this uh, uh, of the center, such as the bridging programs, and we ensure that everything would continue as normal and everything on time. So, uh, I'm proud to say that the bridging programs, the mental health, and the media and communications were uh, were launched on time. The um, the courses commenced on May 4th. The new cohorts, and that was I know it wasn't easy for both of you to, to, to take, on, take on that effort. So um, uh, we also launched an app recently last week called, um, it's an iSent app. It's, uh, it's a newcomer application that is dedicated to, the, uh, to our uh, MLCT group. Um, and I will send you all the details if you haven't had the chance. Um, but that app is also supported in four languages. Other than English, you've got Spanish, Mandarin, and Arabic which will uh, be coming out soon as of next week. But uh, anything you need uh, that our center uh, does is included in that app. You can even connect with uh, our staff or um, our counselors through the app. But <clears throat> without further ado, I just want to kick, uh, start this session and, and say um, I'm proud to see all of you here today and I thank you for making it. Um, I want to start with introducing um, our uh, members of our mental health team, um, sorry, bridging program team. Um, and um, we have Alexandra Rodriguez, who's been with the center for over six years. And she has uh, worked in settlement uh, in different areas. So she's a program manager of BREM, bridging program for mental health. Um, and she also supports, uh, uh, she can speak Spanish. So this webinar, by the way, if you have any questions in either Spanish, English, uh, Arabic, or Mandarin, um, our panelists 
um, can support in any of those languages. And the best way, uh, if you are familiar with Zoom, I'm sure um, a lot of people are already, but uh, if you have a question in any language, you can either type it in the chat room or you can ask it um, in the Q&A room and or you can raise your hand <coughs> with permission to speak and then you can, uh, you know, we will uh, give you the mic. So we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear any comments you have and, and anything to do with uh, bridging or even uh, any questions for our settlement team. Um, so, um, Alexandra, welcome on board. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. It's good to have you here today. Thank you so much, Miles. I'm very happy to be here with all of you guys and having the opportunity to interact with our clients, uh, get a lot of valuable information for them. Uh, today is everything about bridging and careers and settlement in Canada. So um, I'll be happy to discuss that topic with, with everyone. And uh, in Spanish, mi nombre es Alexandra Rodríguez y estoy muy contenta de estar hoy en esta sesión. Esta sesión la vamos a dedicar a los bridging programs y oportunidades que hay aquí en Canadá para poder encontrar eh, empleo. Entonces vamos a estar también con el equipo de asentamiento o settlement y eh, vamos a tener la oportunidad de contestar preguntas y darles información bastante valiosa. Thank you. Muchas gracias, uh, Alexandra. That was uh, well said. Uh, Daniel, um, again, a very familiar face. Uh, you, uh, um, you, you're in the media and communications uh, industry, and I've had the pleasure to work with Daniel um, and uh, learned a lot from you. Um, uh, so thank you for being here, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing uh, your insights on what you're doing. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me, myself and all the rest of us here, Miles. And uh, I love what we do at the center. I love all the programming we do. I, I specialize with our bridging program and I really love and feel very privileged to work with new Canadians to help them carve out their career journey and introduce them to the, uh, the job market, to prepare them to the job market and to kind of fill those gaps that they need to, to get started. Yes, no, that's very, it's very important. Uh, I know your, your mission at the moment. Um, uh, going to our settlement team, uh, which uh, can support any questions related to even this pandemic in terms of accessing information, whether it's financial, uh, emotional, mental, um, in any area, they can at least provide us with that piece of information. Um, let me start with Ling Ling. Um, Ling Ling, you've been with us for uh, over 11 years. Um, and Ling Ling also speaks Chinese, so she can, so go ahead, Ling Ling, welcome today. Thank you, Miles. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Ling Ling. Uh, I'm a settlement worker at the Manoline New Life Center. Um, so I have been here for uh, quite a long time, and uh, during this period of time, I providing the different support to newcomers in terms of employment, um, settlement, uh, volunteer coordination, and uh, senior group facilitation. And I'm happy to be here to answer any questions you have. And um, I can speak uh, English and Mandarin. Um, 我的名字叫朱玲玲,我是新生活中心的社工。安排,还有一些老人活动组的安排,如果你今天有什么问题,尽管可以来问我,谢谢,thank you. Thank you very much, Ling Ling, and uh, Natalia uh, is um, also on our settlement team, and uh, Natalia is, speaks Spanish as well as English, and um, she's also very experienced in, uh, in her field, she's been uh, working in the field for over six years, she's also worked in mental health, and is involved in immigration issues, application processes. Uh, she can inform us on, give, provide information on legal issues as well. Um, but I'll hand over the mic to you, uh, Natalia. Welcome again. Uh, thank you, Miles. Uh, good afternoon to all attendees. Uh, my name is Natalia Rodriguez. Um, I am from Uruguay. I am a Saraman worker at the Mennonite New Life Center. I have worked at this organization uh, for six years in many different programs. I started working as a mental health counselor, and then I um, participate in other programs. Um, 
since 2017, I work in uh, as a servant worker. Uh, I'm a social service worker as well. And uh, this is the second time that I participate in this uh, webinar, um, in this interactive webinar. And today I will be more than happy to provide some clarification on issues related to sermon and the COVID-19 um, and how uh, this pandemic is affecting all of us and how uh, we need to navigate the system with all the, the changes and the implementations from the government side, from the government end. So I will share all the information that I have with you and thank you to all of us for, for being uh, here with us. So um, I speak Spanish, so I'm going to introduce myself in Spanish. Buenas tardes a todos, mi nombre es Natalia Rodríguez, soy trabajadora de asentamiento del Centro Menonita, he trabajado seis años en el Centro Menonita, empecé a trabajar como, eh, en el programa de salud mental, eh, luego participé en otros programas y desde el 2017 que estoy trabajando en el programa de asentamiento, eh, en el día de hoy eh, voy a estar respondiendo preguntas, voy a estar dando información, y eh, en, en todas las, los, las preguntas que tengan que ver con asentamiento y esta situación de pandemia que nos está afectando a todos, así que en la medida de lo posible voy a estar respondiendo eh, a sus preguntas y eh, ofreciendo clarificación. Eh, muchas gracias a todos este, y bienvenidos. Thank you, uh, Natalia. And last but not least on our, our panel today, uh, Bisan, again, you've joined us for a few times. Bisan speaks Arabic as well as English. Uh, thank you, Bisan, for joining. Shukran. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Bisan Aswaydan, and I am uh, the settlement worker uh, at Mennonite New Life Center. I've been working uh, with the Mennonite for the past three years now, and I'm uh, helping newcomers with uh, different uh, uh, settlement matters, especially with the Arabic speaking community. Um, I help with the, with the settlement needs uh, since their beginning, to, since, since they're coming to Canada, um, like from form filling to employment matters, um, sometimes with counseling services. So uh, we're here to say for the clients that we're here, we're still uh, offering online help during this pandemic. Uh, we're, um, we're here uh, to say that we're still offering the services that they still, they need. Uh, since uh, we're not uh, we're not present uh, physically in, the, in our offices right now, uh, I'm gonna say that in Arabic. Uh, my name is Mabi San Swaidan. I'm a worker at the Mennonite New Life Center, a settlement worker. I help the people who speak Arabic from when they come to Canada with a lot of issues, like the forms. أي شيء بيتعلق بموضوع الإميغريشن تعبيت ملفات لإلهم وأي شيء بيساعدون بمجال العمل بكندا. Thank you. Thank you, Bisan. And once again, welcome everyone. Uh, so uh, just uh, uh, one last thing again, um, just a reminder, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to either raise your hand and would love to hear from you and I'll unmute, give you permission to speak and you can speak to any one of our panelists. Uh, ask any questions, or you can uh, um, uh, type in your questions in the chat room or in the Q&A session. Uh, so, um, I, so today's session on bridging programs, there is, um, sometimes some people don't know what a bridging program is, and they get confused between a bridging program and higher education. And that's something I want to uh, address, and uh, I want one of our panelists to address that. So, for those who don't know what a bridging program is, uh, Alexander, explain that. What, what, what is, how is that different from, you know, going to a, a normal university or college? Sure, thank you. Um, so bridging program might be a new concept for, for many people. Um, bridging programs are very important in the sense that they allow you to get some training and have the opportunity to work in the field that you used to work back home, work here in Canada, specifically in Ontario. So what we do in bridging programs is um, we identify certain gaps that immigrants have. We all, as immigrants, we have gaps because we are not perhaps uh, familiarized with the culture. We are not familiarized with um, the system itself, right? Like if I work, for example, in mental health, what do I need to do? Uh, 
what are the regulations that I need to consider in order to practice. So a lot of um, details that our participants or any participant in a bridge training program will learn are related to the practice of the profession uh, in here in Ontario. So there are differences when people practice their professions outside Canada. And therefore, when they come here, they still need to learn a few things. They got the basics. They already went to university. We're talking here about internationally trained professionals. So that's um, the participants that we get in bridging programs. People who already went to university, they got bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, and they want to come to Canada and continue working in their field. So we don't want them to go back to university and pretty much start all over again. We want them to use all that experience and knowledge that they have, that they are bringing, and pretty much translate it into this Canadian context. So bridging programs are designed to fill those gaps and help people learn cultural competencies, adapt to the new system, to the new context, and being able to, at the end of the day, get a job in the field that they want. That is, um, in, in most of the cases, is the same one that they had uh, back home. It, it is, yeah. I mean, um, I guess the unique, uh, it's, it's pretty unique um, because uh, it's, it's sort of tailor-made to suit uh, that segment of the population, the newcomers and immigrants who struggled um, right. to, to fit into the, you know, into society. And uh, I know for a fact, like the, the bridging programs also have a foundation course that sort of gives them, uh, makes them aware of, of how to um, deal with the challenges of fitting in uh, into the Canadian um, workplace and the Canadian society. But um, uh, let's get into, I wanna ask you about the specifics of your program. So um, you're the program manager of BRAM, which is uh, the, the bridging program for mental health. And um, it's called Bridge to Registration and Employment in Mental Health. And the, and the word employment is, is, is very, um, uh, is, is, it, it, it mean, it's a big word there. It means a lot because you offer placements as well. Tell us a little bit about that program and tell us about the advantages of that, um, the employment aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes. Yeah, so as you say, BREM is the Bridge to Registration and Employment in Mental Health. So the main goal of this program is to help mental health practitioners, internationally trained mental health practitioners to get into the field here in Canada um, and specifically in the province of Ontario. So what we do is um, through different classes, we teach all these details that I was just uh, mentioning before and we prepare people to get job ready. So in, when we talk about employment is our main role as a bridging program is to get people ready and prepare them to go for an interview, write a resume, you know, uh, prepare a cover letter, being adapted to all these Canadian steps. And at the end of the day, uh, when they go and apply for a job, being able to compete with others and perhaps have an advantage over other applicants to a position because they um, already understand a lot of things that perhaps other immigrants don't understand. So when, when they are part of the bridging program, or the BREM program in particular, there are two options for them. So one is employment in mental health in uh, various positions that don't necessarily need to be regulated. So in, in there are protected titles here in Canada. So in many cases, when people want to work, let's say as a social worker, as a um, psychologist or psychotherapist, they need to get registration with a regulatory body, um, depending on the, on the profession. So many positions here, they don't require registration. They don't require it to be licensed with any regulatory body. However, people may be interested in those that require licensing. So what we do here in the BREM program is we also help people um, to get registration with the College of Psychotherapies of Ontario. So there are two streams in our program and some people might be only focused on um, general positions or level entry positions in the mental health field and no regulation. 
and they can go and practice for sure. There are a lot of opportunities uh, in the field, but some others may want to pursue and, and become a registered psychotherapist. So if they already practice psychotherapy, if they already um, got education that is related to psychotherapy, they can come to us. We can help them again to understand the minutia of the, of the psychotherapy practice in Ontario. And then eventually, once they finish the program, or even before, when they are in the program, they do placement, right? As you were mentioning, Miles. So right. um, as part of what we offer is placement opportunity. Placement means that you go for an agency and you have the opportunity to work within an agency and understand the Canadian workplace, um, meet new people, create connections, start with you, build your own network. And um, that's a very, very valuable piece of, of bridging. So even before they finish, they already start working in this um, employment piece. And after they graduate from the program, they will be, if they're in the registration stream, they will get be getting their registration as psychotherapist. So that means they can practice psychotherapy. And if they are in the employment stream, they can still go and find jobs because their confidence also it's um has in haze right it has been haze it's uh right many of our participants they they have shared that they feel way more confident after they finish the program because they already know they got a lot of information about the system and how things work in their field and therefore they they feel more prepared i think i think you uh you you um uh, you you basically pointed a very uh uh, you made a very important point there on networking. Um, I know, I, I know, with mental health, uh, it's uh, obviously there's the educational part, uh, the theoretical part, and putting that into practice. Um, but then, and when it comes to the other program we have, like the media and communications, um, it's an entirely different industry, which depends a lot because uh, on networking. I know that for a fact because I've been a journalist throughout my whole life. And I, it's basically who you know and when you know them as well. The timing is very important and where you know them, that is, that is key. So um, the bridging program here in the media and communications, again, I think um, what Daniel, you do um, is try um, aside from making the students or, uh, aware of uh, the media landscape in Ontario is also connecting them with the industry. Um, and with, with, with uh, uh, the different, um, you know, uh, sectors within that industry as well, whether it's advertising, PR, journalism. Um, and I think that's a very, uh, uh, you know, um, great thing you guys have, uh, that the program has achieved. But tell us more about that initiative uh, and your experiences, Daniel. Okay, thank you, Miles. So, yes, I know, I know Miles from the, uh, the bridge to employment for meeting communications program. So I, uh, I'm a career uh, employment and career specialist. In the program, I'm the career developer, which means I, I teach the employment uh, course. I arrange for the work placements, but throughout the six months of the program, I, um, I counsel and I coach the students. I help them with setting goals, short-term uh, plans and long-term plans as well. So I work very closely with the students, uh, each and every one of them. And uh, everything Miles says and what Alexandra says is absolutely true to the BEMC program. And in terms of the, one of the things I wanted to really highlight is the difference between um, soft skills and, and hard skills. So soft skills are communication skills and hard skills are the professional skills. And from what I, I understand from working with newcomers, um, it's things um, employers value you know, hard skills and, and soft skills differently around the world. Um, outside of Canada, there's an emphasis on professional skills. Professional skills means everything um, in outside of um, Canada. And there's a, more, there's a greater emphasis on your professional skills and a lesser emphasis on communication skills to um, get a job and to, to excel in the job. Um, in Canada, it's different. The value, um, there's definitely value on on hard skills, your professional skills, but there's a, a very important value on communication skills, which is your soft skills. And that's the emphasis that we place here to help 
um, you know, our participants understand what the um, cultural, um, the workplace cultural norms and expectations are. And a lot of that is about your, your soft skills and how you communicate and your attitude and use of vocabulary and idioms and, and expressions and things like that. Um, and um, I, always, I always tell people this, um, hard skills will get you the job often, but it's the soft skills that will help you keep the job and help you move up in your organization. And um, so we focus a lot in bridging programs in, um, in developing soft skills. Um, one other thing that we do very differently than other programs is that we help individuals um, rebrand themselves here because most people who come here don't know anyone in their professional network in the industry here right. and like no one knows you and you don't know anybody and so um, the responsibility is for every individual to um, introduce themselves and help um, in the industry understand what their specialty is we call that branding we call that self-branding. So it's important to, to understand what branding is and how you can brand yourself. Uh, we, we spend a lot of time in, uh, talking about that um, and, and helping develop those skills. Um, and um, I think another thing that we do differently than a, a typical university or college program is we, we have a sensitivity to newcomers. These programs are specifically designed for newcomers. So. Um, there's an academic component to it, but um, our team, um, our approach is uh, all based on the sensitivity to newcomers. Um, and I think one of the things that um, I, I'm very proud that we do in, in our program is um, we help new, uh, newcomers overcome those stereotypes of um, being a newcomer and lacking Canadian work experience, which is really the biggest obstacle that they, they face here. I like to call it the um, the fish out of water syndrome. So just like fish out of water, um, you know, um, we help people to overcome those stereotypes that you're different, that you don't belong. If, if you come into this country with professional skills and you can contribute, you belong here, you belong here. But there, there is so much resistance from stereotypes and stigmas that you're, you're different, you look different, you sound different, you may not get along with people here, you may not be understood. And that really affects, I guess, the mind frame of, of newcomers and it, it decreases their confidence. Yeah, so you know, uh, Daniel, yeah, no, I, uh, I, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm happy you point out the hard skills and soft skills differences because Daniel, um, you are a career developer mm -hmm. um, and you also, you teach some of these classes so you are a coach you uh you know um and and you are an instructor and i think the advantage of these programs which is different than what you get in a normal university is we go beyond the theoretical beyond the just the textbook material here you're having a hands-on approach as well and you're then going straight out to the field afterwards and that's um, you know, and, and that's, that's one thing that's really uh, advantageous and, and gets people uh, 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 rolling straight into, into society, I guess. Um, but I, I, I wanted to um, also get into, delve into the content, which is very important because uh, a lot of our listeners here um, and attendees may not know what, what goes on in these programs, whether it's Prem or BAMC. Um, what uh, Daniel? What sort of what, what programs do you teach in that? What 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 do we what do you, what should someone expect if someone's a media communications, a journalist, or advertising just landed here and wants to take this program? What are they learning? <clears throat> well, we offer fun, uh, foundational courses. Um, I teach the employment preparation, which is one of them, but we also teach um, Ontario um, media landscape, which helps um, people understand the organizations in Ontario and industries in Ontario that are hiring, the, um, the trends, the hiring trends, um, things like the hidden job market, what does that look like? How do you, how do you uh, access the hidden job market? Things like that. Um, and you know, what is really unique with BEMC is that we have a partnership with Ryerson University. Um, Ryerson University, they teach uh, a, a, a course called um, Workplace Communications and they teach it 
just general workplace communications. But BMC, uh, we have a special relationship with Ryerson where they are take they took the workplace communications program and tailor it to the media and communications industry, um, and they teach it in. Um, so we have a wonderful Ryerson instructor that comes into our center. Um, now everything's on Zoom. Um, but they teach our class, um, and it's tailored for media and communications, and it's. Um, that program focuses on developing soft skills and the workplace culture and communications and policies and expectations. And our students really, really benefit from learning that uh, before they go into the real workplace. Um, we also teach spe um, specialized courses to help professionals to make themselves more rounded uh, media professionals. And these courses are, uh, include videography, photography, entrepreneurship, uh, digital design, um, journalism, and public relations. So by the end of our program, I our students could really come out really well-rounded with soft skills, focusing on soft skills, fine-tuning some of the hard skills <clears throat> as well, and gives them a lot of confidence to, um, to, to get started in the job market. Right. And, uh, I also uh, place students um, in work placements as well. These could be uh, public relations agencies, marketing agencies, um, news outlets, uh, newsrooms, magazines, um, you know, a variety of different organizations as well. I want to, yeah, actually the placements, I want to uh, get into that, uh, Alexandra, um, because I know a lot of probably, um, I guess in mental health in, in and that, in that sector, People come here with, and they hear that, okay, I was a doctor back home or had this big degree, I have to start all over. Um, but I know it's different with the bridging programs. How, um, how successful have, have you been with placing students? Or, or, um, and and what, what really, um, what, what's the reaction you've had? What's the outcome? How has it been like? I mean, you've been in the program for many years now. That's right. Well, um, I must say, that all of our participants have been placed in, in very meaningful uh, placement opportunities. So many of them, most of them are um, placed in community agencies around the GTA mainly. Um, but um, lastly, we have been working with, with private practices as well, uh, simply because it's the, the new way of, of practicing psychotherapy. It's more and more we're seeing that people want to have their own practice. So our participants have been always connected with different organizations. They really, really appreciate the opportunity to go and work, be part of a team, understand how things work, um, create these connections that we were talking about before, um, getting Canadian references, you know, even that, that it may sound like something very small, but it's actually very important to have Canadian references when you're applying for a job. So those are the things that, that they could get for sure. And um, when we have placed all of our participants, but afterwards, um, when they are looking for a job, applying for different jobs, we have an 80% rate of uh, employment after or within the first year uh, after they complete the, the program. So I will say that is um, a very good percentage and our participants are feeling more and more ready to apply for different positions and, and get these jobs. So overall, we are doing, I believe, um, if I'm humble, <laughs> we're doing a good job, I think, in, in supporting participants in finding good opportunities for them. And it's, um, it's a very personalized uh, process because we offer them uh, placement opportunities based on their previous experience uh, and what they want to do at this point. In some cases, they need to reinvent themselves and we help them to do that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a, a, let's be face it, it's not an easy industry to get into um, anywhere in the world, right? Um, right? And the same like the media and communications, again, it's who you know and uh, what you know, but I know with mental health, there's a lot of things to, you know, to, to watch out for. But um, since we're on the topic of, of, of jobs and employment, I want to bring in um, our um, professionals from the settlement team. Um, that uh, how, I know the whole, the whole idea of these series, pilot programs was launched 
as I mentioned earlier, um, is as a, um, a reaction or as a uh, to um, initiative um, to uh, during COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and I know there's been a lot of challenges for a lot of people. A lot of people lost jobs. Uh, some people were already looking for jobs. And um, I know we've serviced but over 2,000 clients, I think, uh, at this point, uh, around 2,000, maybe more, uh, since the start of the pandemic. And I'm sure a lot of those scholars were, or clients, were job seekers as well. So I want to bring, uh, if, if Ling Ling or Natalia or Bisan, um, give us a, shed, can you shed some light on that? And how, how are we helping them? What are people looking for? Maybe uh, Ling Ling, I'm sure you have uh, Okay, um, thank you, Les. Yeah, um, so settlement is always the base for the different kinds of programs. So newcomers normally will come to our settlement team first to get any support. So I used to be a settlement worker and also employment worker at the Mandona New Lab Center. So basically the newcomers will come to us to get the general employment support like how to navigate the job um, websites and uh, how to make the resume more beautiful for you know the current trend and uh, how to prepare for the interview and uh, so for me um, basically I will provide those um, uh, supports for them like to sit down with them and uh, to tell them how to you know search the jobs how to um, uh, modify your resume based on the job postings and uh, how to, um, you know, to feel confident facing, you know, the interviews. So, but now during this pandemic, um, pandemic and the situation is a little bit, you know, difficult, we cannot talk in person, but we do have um, like email support and a telephone support. And also, um, if you would like, you can also um, attend our you know webinars to get some information so um if any newcomers or job seekers they would like to know this um general you know the employment supports feel free to contact us so any our um settlement workers can provide this uh, support but if you would like to know any you know the department regarding the the bridging program so we do have two wonderful you know bridging programs they also provide the you know the relevant um job employment supports too and we do also have another program called um hopes and they also provide the you know the employment help so i don't know whether i uh, answered the question or not but if we do not natalia or bizan can you know talk more no, that was very informative. Natalia, I think you have something to say. Thank you, Lilin. Mm -hmm. I just want to add something to what uh, Lilin said. So um, looking for employment during the pandemic can be very challenging, especially for, um, for newcomers. Uh, I have some clients who uh, just arrived in Canada um, during the, pandemia, the pandemic, and they were um, wondering if there were some opportunities for them. Um, there are opportunities. and. Um, there are employment support in the community. So all the employment agencies are still working. So they are still supporting clients to prepare for, um, for that search. So especially uh, right now, there are a lot of customer service uh, jobs uh, that some people may qualify and some people uh, may find that they want to work there. And um, what I do sometimes is just to refer those clients to those agencies that they have connections to uh, companies that are uh, currently hiring. So if you're looking for a job, please uh, connect, uh, connect to us, that we can uh, help you with the resume and with the cover letter. And uh, we, of, of course, we can connect you to Hopes. But if you are just looking for a, show, for a job right now, there are agencies there that are uh, willing to help you. So um, we provide with that information, but it's very important that uh, you um, book an appointment with uh, any of us so we can um, uh, provide with that information also with some motivation because uh, the fact that a lot of people are losing their jobs uh, because of this situation, which is it's very, very sad, 
uh, there are companies that are actually uh, hiring people. Um, so that's what I wanted to add to what uh, Lin Lin said. You know, Natalia, thank you for that. Uh, um, I want to, I know uh, during COVID-19, we've had a few questions this week on employment insurance, sickness benefit. Um, and uh, Bisan, I want to ask you this, uh, because one of our, um, we had a question just come in about a family member who stopped working and they were infected with COVID-19. So, um, and, they, and he was asked that he should self-isolate. So because of that, he couldn't work and he couldn't support himself <clears throat> nor his family. So um, when it comes to employment insurance, it can get a bit confusing because there's so many, uh, uh, so many areas to that. Um, what, what is he entitled to and how can he receive that benefit? Uh, okay, I know a lot of situations are arising right now because of the COVID-19. Some of the clients are um, stopping work uh, and they are eligible for the CERB uh, if uh, actually they um, meet the eligibility criteria. And some others are, uh, they got sick because um, they were like exposed uh, to the virus or um, they, they are in quarantine for any other reason. Uh, for those who are sick because of the virus, they are definitely eligible for the sickness benefit. Uh, right now, uh, the, uh, the government uh, is being lenient and they're not asking for any um, like uh, certificate or anything or any medical reports that proves that there is uh, that the, the client or the, the individual is sick. So all they have to do is just apply to the uh, sickness benefit online. And there is uh, the there's a 15 weeks period for that, so they, they can definitely uh, apply for the for the sickness benefit. But but if uh, someone is uh, like is being um, uh, needs help, uh, sorry, needs to help someone that is sick, uh, there is a special kind of help right now. Uh, it's uh, it's available right now for those uh, individuals that are helping uh, other uh, others uh, like family members or. Uh, roommates or anyone that they live with, um, uh, it's uh, it's it's a special kind of uh, sickness benefit. Um, they can ask for like if they are working, they can ask for their employers for that uh, um, period of time that they they you know they want to leave the work maybe for a few hours a day or I don't know how much they need to in order for uh, or in order to that uh, to help with that. Um, uh, that individual so um, there is there is ways right now um, that people can apply to and uh, and you know can you know, cope with the situation so definitely there's uh, there is the sickness benefit that he uh, that person can apply to and can benefit benefit from um, the benefit uh, for sickness benefit, it's it's completely a paid benefit and it's for 15 weeks period of time. But for the other benefit that's available for those individuals that are helping uh, people uh, who are sick, uh, it's different. It can be unpaid benefit. Uh, it depends on the situation um, uh, of the of the individual. I've added I've added the link, link Canada.ca. Yes, it's available on the Canada website. Uh, all all kind of uh, uh, support is available, whether it's a CERB, whether it's CESB, uh, whether it's sickness benefit or EI. Uh, it's all, it's all available on the Canada website, CRA. Yeah, um, we have Aurelia who uh, is taking the Bram program, the bridging program for mental health, and she wants to say something. Aurelia, welcome uh, today's session to today's session. Um, I hope you're doing well. Hi, thank you, Miles. Um, nice to see you, Alexandra. For uh, I haven't seen you for a long time, and Natalia. I met Natalia because I I'm doing my placement at Mennonite uh, Mennonite Center, and um, I started my brain program last year, and I decided to go for this stream. They have two stream: E employment for employment, and R for the registration. And I decided to apply for the the employment. And maybe in the future, I will apply for registration. But for now, I would love to uh, work uh, at an agency 
and it's been great. And what you just said, Miles, about the um, networking, the, this was excellent. The program is excellent, and the the way it's done, we go and we have to do um, our training um, placement at the agencies. And you meet a lot of new people and um, you add a lot of to your um, resume. And I remember one of our instructors was, uh, we had like training, how to do resumes. Uh, we had training for interviews, it was excellent. Like was the best training I had uh, participate because since I arrived in Canada three years ago, I've been to another agency and I had been trained there too, it was very good. But this train, training for like placements and resumes to, to look for a job was the best. And I remember my instructor saying, Sheila, she was saying that uh, our resumes will completely, most of them will be completely different from the first one that we uh, uh, presented to Brem. And it's amazing, like my resume was the best resume I ever had, I have before, I, sorry. And um, the program is excellent. Uh, we have to study a lot for sure and learn a lot of the, uh, the, the um, subtle, subtle things from the um, Canadian culture, but it's, um, it's a, a, an excellent thing to do. Go for a, a bridging program and then uh, your life can change. Like, like my life changed it. I'm working in this uh, agency and next week I will start seeing my clients online because of the COVID and everything that happened. So I will keep doing my work in Canada and I'm very glad for that. Thank oh, you. Brilliant. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you, Relia. Sorry, I was muted before I was talking to myself. <laughs> So I'm very, very glad to see you here and have this opportunity to talk to you and know that you're doing well. And, and thanks for your kind words to the program. Yes, you know, I loved it. That is, that is excellent. I'm glad you, you um, shared your experience there. I just quickly, out of curiosity, want to find out how long had you been here um, before you, like, what was the gap? How many years have you been here before you took the, the program? Yes, I uh, was... Uh, I will be three years next, uh, in June, June 14. I will be three years that I'm in Canada. And when I arrived, I went to this agency. And first thing, my uh, the counselor told me, oh, you could do this program, brain program. But I didn't feel that was time. You know, first months I was looking for a job. And I, I, I just want to survive. So after two years and four months, I Feel, I felt prepared, so I, I, I attended the uh, the um, uh, session with Alexandra. She explained how the program worked, what we needed, all the documents that we we need. So it took me two years to be prepared to change and study, go back to school again and study again. The first two years was kind of difficult. But uh, I know I, in, my, uh, in the program, I have colleagues that they just arrived in Canada and they were already in the program with us. But for me, it took two years. That is amazing. That is amazing. Alexandra, you must be really proud, you know, when you see students like this, that her journey was quite, you know, quite long and, and, and it's not easy. But um, okay. three years seems like a long time, but I guess relatively, it's not that long for other students, right? Like, Zana, you probably have students that are here that have been here for 10 years in limbo, don't know what to do with their life, and then here comes this program. Um, That's and right, yes. Uh, and and to, to what Aurelia was sharing, um, it, it is valid also to give, allow some time to settle down. A lot of our participants, they are pretty new to the country and they join the class and it works for them. And that's uh, great, but sometimes people may need one, two years, three, you know, just to settle down, just to find a, a survival job in the meanwhile. But always keep in mind that if you have a profession um, back home and you want to do it here, there might be some opportunities. And I really want to touch base on that a little bit, if, if it's okay, Miles, very yeah. briefly. Go ahead. Um, I really want to encourage um, internationally trained professionals to 
find information about uh, bridging programs. Today, we're talking about the bridging program for mental health professionals, for professionals in the media and communication sector, but there are many other bridging programs. So if you or someone that you know had a profession back home, try to find information in the Ontario website. If you um, search it in Google, you bridging programs, you will find a whole list of the professions that offer this opportunity through a bridging program, and it will be very, very beneficial for you. And sometimes you uh, need to reinvent yourself too. Maybe you're not going to be doing exactly what you were doing, but there are other opportunities. One door is closed, but many others will be open. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities in this country, and I think you need to be my main advice for internationally trained professionals is to be open minded and and be flexible and be willing to change and adapt because if you do if you do it you most likely will be successful but if maybe you are attached to who you were what you were doing and then you deny yourself other opportunities then it might not work that way Absolutely. No, I mean, there's a lot of obstacles, right, to employment, uh, especially for sure. internationally trained professionals. And that's something, Daniel, you've also encountered as well uh, with a lot of the um, students that you've worked with, right? How, I, I want to know from your point of view, how have you kind of worked with those type of individuals that are struggling, um, you know, to find jobs because people just want to, they want the quickest route possible but that's we always know you know um, things take longer than 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 anticipated what i encourage people to see this experience is it's a journey um find value in your journey uh there's so many moments in the journey um where you will need to unlearn and learn new things and then learn and learn new things and to give yourself the space and the time to do this and it's not something that can be rushed. You want to do it the right way. A lot of people uh, I've heard, they may rush into a job because they need to and everyone needs to find work. Um, but they don't have the tools. They, they were not prepared to. They didn't know about the industry. They didn't know about, they didn't develop their soft skills and they find a job and they have a lot of difficulty with the job. And it could be with a really good organization. And then, you know, sometimes I hear people losing the jobs because they weren't prepared. And then their confidence goes down. And then it's really, really hard. Once your confidence is down and you've had a really bad experience in the workplace, um, sometimes with newcomers, it's stereotypes and discrimination. If you're not prepared for any of that, then it's really hard to recover from it, it, you, it takes longer to recover from it. So one of the things bridging offers is we, we help people to prepare. So if they, are, if they face those challenges and difficulties, they will know what to do. And I think setting expectations, setting realistic expectations is something that we try to do in the program. Um, in fact, you know, our bridging program, like the environment of the bridging program, we try to emulate the workplace, like a real workplace. So we emphasize the importance of punctuality, importance of communications, um, even within the class, like how people communicate and ask questions and, and um, um, just work together on projects and have discussions. We try, to, we, we have parameters that are similar to the workplace. So profession, values of professionalism, punctuality, and um, uh, we try to enforce that so to prepare people so when they go into the workplace they already know what the workplace looks like because brem is like that and bemc is like that you know we we uphold those values in within our programs to stimulate a workplace environment and um so we we encourage people to uh, take time yeah time and space to prepare themselves and not rush into the process do it the right way. Yeah, just basically yeah. invest in the time to do it the right way. You know, the, the other thing is that um, it's, uh, I guess there is obviously an application process, there's eligibility as well. Mm -hmm. But um, from the requirements that I've seen, it's not as, um, you know, the eligibility is not as, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, there, are, there is a standard. Mm -hmm. um, 
but uh, it's 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 made an effortless way, I guess, for this for the students. But just really briefly, and I, and because we're running out of time, um, maybe uh, I want both of you to give us uh, uh, Daniel and Alexandra. How or what are you looking for for potential students? Uh, what should they have and what shouldn't they have? Uh, go ahead, uh, Alexandra. Thanks. Uh, well, internationally trained pro trained professionals uh, within the for BREM, the sector of mental health, and a minimum of four year bachelor degree, and that has to be equivalent to Canadian um, bachelors and at least two years of experience working in the field because again the person needs to be kind of ready to to practice so two years of experience um english level it's a minimum of seven for clb so it's um quite high in comparison with other programs perhaps but it's highly needed in, in mental health especially um people have the only tool that they have to work with clients is communication so uh, it's very important to have a good English level and um, the rest is just submitting the documents things like resume cover letter immigration documents they can be um, permanent residents they can be citizens um, convention refugees or um, there's one more that I forgot uh, refugee claimants. Refugee claimants. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So um, all those people can just connect with us, um, send us an email, get in touch with us over the phone, over the email, and we can start guiding them through the application process. I know for BEMS there are a few things that are different. Yeah, there are a few similarities, but I guess do they have uh, to have a journalism background or advertising degree? They do need education, like you know, uh, journalism, marketing, advertising, uh, communications, degree or diploma, or to support their profession, um, or similar education, but it needs to be related to communications and media. Right. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And further to what Alexandra said, um, so well, same thing uh, for, for BMC, two years of uh, professional experience as well. And um, I think one thing we wanted to point out is that um, like um, academic evaluation like WES, so we don't require that necessarily. Which is, but, yeah, and, and one thing we haven't pointed out that I know right now the, um, the cohorts, both of them uh, are being um, conducted through Zoom for all mm -hmm. uh, participants, all students. Mm -hmm. But um, in normal times, uh, you have classes that are conducted in the classroom, physical classroom, but for those outside of the GTA, Toronto area, they can participate if, in, if they are, um, you know, uh, it's an Ontario-wide funded program mm -hmm. that they can, um, uh, you make the exception, they can participate through Zoom. Mm -hmm. But, um, so I just want to let everyone know that it's not just strictly on Zoom and it's not an online course some people don't like that. It's, a, it's in real time. You're actually interacting with the classroom, mm -hmm. talking with your professor, also with other students, which, is, which also makes it uh, unique in that aspect. It's not an online program per se. Mm -hmm. um, but um, again, this, this program um, uh, is, is the whole Zoom. We, I mean, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so happy that I think the organization is proud that you were able to launch on May 4th. Uh, despite the whole pandemic, it must have been really challenging getting everyone, training everyone to use Zoom um, and getting the teachers, the instructors, the coordinators. It's not easy. Um, I understand that. But um, among, I mean, this is one of many things that the center um, is, is, is also dedicated to providing services. Um, and I want to go back to the iSent app that we launched uh, last week. And next week, it's going to be available in English, Arabic, and Spanish. So the iSent app is a newcomer support mobile application that um, the Mennonite New Life Center of Toronto um, basically uh, launched. It allows immigrants and refugees to easily access a wide range of our programs and services. And uh, you can basically, on that app, it's easy to, to, to log on. To register you can download it on an android phone or an iphone 
and you can you will learn more about the settlement, uh, immigration, legal rights, employment, health, recreation, even the latest incidents that, that are affecting our community. You'll find all that. You'll find dedicated sections. And there is a special section for upcoming events and even connecting directly with any of our individuals. Um, I know there's been a lot of hype. We had a webinar last week. We had a lot of uh, people inquiring. We had a lot of people downloading the app. Um, so I encourage all of you to check it out. I will include it right now in the chat room. So if any of you want to check that out and download it, please feel free to. Um, and you can also connect with us through that app. Um, Natalia, I want to give you sort of the, uh, before we wrap up the last word there, um, because uh, tied to all the, all the things that are going on, because at the end of the day, this pilot series was launched uh, because of COVID-19. Uh, how, how can I say this in a, in a very um, uh, correct way, political correct way, like, but it is, it's, it's been a challenging time. It's been difficult for everyone. And it's been, you guys have been doing maybe 300% of the work. But tell us about how this time has been for you and for the work that you're doing in the center. Thank you, Miles, for the question. I would say that um, to be in, in my position by now, to be able to, um, to work from home, to be able to continue supporting um, newcomers, immigrants, and everyone, it has been a privilege for me. Uh, of course, we have some limitations. It's not the same when we work at the office, because especially when uh, we help clients to fill out applications, and to complete uh, the process. Uh, we need certain devices that we don't have at home. For, for example, just to give you an example, just to print the forms or uh, just to, um, we do a lot of advocacy and we need to have the client, they need, we need the verbal consent to contact other organizations, mm -hmm. especially to contact, for example, Service Canada or IRCC. So we, we, we experience some uh, constraint in that respect. However, um, I believe that uh, we have done everything that it was um, reachable for us. And um, I think all of us in the settlement team, we are very, very pleased for the opportunity to continue doing the work. Um, I, I can emphasize enough the fact that we're very privileged to continue working, uh, to continue doing the work we do um, despite uh, this situation that everyone in the world is experiencing. So since, um, since the pandemic, since the state of emergency start in March uh, 15, 2020, uh, we have never stopped. We have never stopped supporting clients. We have never stopped learning, educating ourselves about the new programs that the government implement uh, to help citizens, to help permanent residents, to help refugees, to help non-status. So everyone is important and everyone deserves the help. So we are here to do everything that is possible. So thank you to everyone. And uh, again, connect to us. If you have questions, call. We're not at the office. We're not physically at the office, but we are doing the same type of work and we're putting the same type of energy and uh, motivation and we're doing the work from home. So thank you. Well, thanks to you. Thanks to all of you. You've been great uh, and uh, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you very much uh, for all the efforts. Um, again, um, this is the last of these pilot series. This was our fifth webinar and it's the final one. Um, we may continue this in the, in the future. Uh, we may, uh, we're planning on other initiatives and other webinars. Um, but for all of you who have attended uh, for the past five weeks, we thank you so much. And we, um, we also, I just want to point something out. We've had attendees uh, this week uh, or today, I mean, from uh, outside the Ontario region, outside of Canada, actually, we've had some people from Dubai that are in the chat room, they've connected with us. So I, I want to thank you, Elias. Uh, thank you for joining us from Dubai um, and others as well from, from, from the region. So. Uh, good luck to everyone. Uh, Alexandra, thank you for being here. Uh, Daniel, thank you. Uh, Bisan, thank you so much for everything you're doing. Ling Ling as well. Um, and nice to uh, have you again. And Natalia, 
So I wish you all the best. I've included the, uh, I have uh, uh, included the links to um, the iSent app and as well as um, uh, Ask MNLCT page where you'll find more questions on, um, uh, on, uh, on this topic that we discussed today. Um, and if there's anything else that we can do for you, please let us know at any point. And uh, I'm going to share my screen as well um, so you can uh, connect with us. So th that's our website for those of you who haven't, um, aren't aware, mnlct.org. Um, and then if you want to check out the Ask MNLCT series, they are recorded. Um, so you can always watch the series again. Uh, if you haven't, uh, you can see the past series. And those are our numbers. And we are operational anytime. So thank you again once more. Good luck to everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and it was nice to see you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye.